In case you're just joining us, I'm talking with clinical psychologist Dr. Stephen Ragusia, and right now we're talking about a disturbing subject, and that's psychotic killers. Now, before we went to break, you were just kind of going over the two types of serial killers. Yeah. Um, uh, the one we were first talking about was people who are actually genuinely mentally ill. Schizophrenia is a serious mental illness. Um, it's as nearly as we can understand it, it's actually pretty close to Parkinson's disease, only it, it affects a different part of the brain. Uh, I mean, that's one way people can think about it. Um, it tends to affect the frontal lobes of the brain, and the frontal lobes of the brain are involved with understanding the difference between reality and fantasy, are involved with understanding the difference between right and wrong, and a bunch of other functions as well. But those two wind up being involved in these mass killings that we are seeing in the society. Um, uh, I knew a young man once who um, uh, had killed his father. And um, what the whole story was about, once I got to evaluate him, was that he had, this young man had begun um, having trouble with impotence. And he, he believed eventually uh, that the reason why he was suffering from impotence was because there were chemicals in aerosol cans that were uh, uh, rendering him impotent. And as a result of that, um, uh, he began to create a chain of logic that involved the communists trying to make all the American males impotent so that they could take over the United States. <coughs> and um, uh, and uh, the the trick to all this was that his father manufactured a product that came in aerosol cans. Oh. So over a period of time, he began to think that his father was a communist agent, and his dad walked in one day, and um, uh, he was sitting there in the kitchen, this young man who's about 24 years old, with a double barrel shotgun in his lap, and he just emptied it into his father's chest and killed him. And he thought he was committing a patriotic act. Mm -hmm. And um, I worked with him until such time as um, antipsychotic medications and psychotherapy were able to be effective. And he eventually realized what he had done was murder his innocent father. And then the poor man became suicidal. And the big challenge was stopping him from killing himself. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that's one way you can think of um, that kind of mass murder taking place is somebody thinks thoughts that make no sense to you or I have nothing to do with reality but it makes sense to them mm -hmm. within the realm of their disordered mind mm -hmm. they're just so far off out there aren't they that's correct that's mm -hmm. right um, now most schizophrenics are not dangerous most schizophrenics aren't going to hurt anybody or going to kill anybody it's a very tiny mi minority that we're talking about here um, now uh, other kinds of mass killers um, are killers that are people who have been raised in very violent households, mm -hmm. um, not uncommonly. Um, for example, the James Boys were famous in the Wild West, mm -hmm. um, and the James Boys were raised by a violent mother in a violent family, mm -hmm. and they were taught that that was the right way to behave. Um, and um, so they weren't really what we would call sociopathic which is people who don't know the difference between right and wrong, they just had a twisted sense of what right and wrong was. Mm -hmm. Because they had been brought up in that environment all it, their life. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so they believed that the right thing to do was to rob people and kill people, mm -hmm. because that's what their mother taught them to do. Mm -hmm. um, and that, by the way, is common within organized crime. Um, there was a famous uh, case of a man um, uh, who undid the Chicago Crime Syndicate because he broke away from it, even though he had been raised to be a member of, of the mob in Chicago, um, he didn't have the killer instinct. Mm -hmm. and, um, and he talked at length in, in a book and in various other settings about how he was trained by his father to be very cruel and uh, murderous. And um, so sometimes when you hear about mass killings, What's really going on is people who have been trained to be violent from a very young age mm -hmm. simply are carrying forth their training um, in a way that society finds unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I once worked with a, a, a young man who um, 
uh, had killed um, uh, a total of five people. Um, and he fell into that category. Mm -hmm. he, had been, um, he had been raised by a family that was uh, involved with drug dealing. And from the time he was very young, he'd been given drugs. He'd been given uh, grass to smoke from the time he was seven. And he had his first acid trip when he was 10. And uh, they would just put it in his orange juice and things like that. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> and, um, uh, and one day, he and his brother got into a fight. And uh, his brother stabbed him two times in the back. And he got a gun, and he emptied the gun into his brother's chest. And then he went out and murdered uh, four women who looked like his mother. That's so scary. And it's hard. That's something that you think that you read about in a book or you hear about on a movie, not something that happens in But it life. happens in reality. Right. And because you mentioned movies, I'll say again, it's partially, it happens partially because in our movies, we celebrate these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. In the, the gentleman that I was just telling you about, he and his girlfriend committed these murders together, okay? And at one point, uh, while they were on the beach, they wrote in the sand their two names and then wrote, Natural Born Killers Forever. Uh, making reference to the Woody, Woody, Woody Harrelson movie, mm -hmm. Natural Born mm -hmm. Killers, because they thought they were acting out that script in a way. Mm -hmm. um, so when you make things like that glamorous, it's more likely that people will do them. It will happen in reality. Well, unfortunately, we're running out of time, but thank you for sharing all of this information. If you want more information on Dr. Ragusea, check out his number on the bottom of the screen. You can also give him a call. Thank you again. Thank I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after these messages.